Hey, this is Mo Lunsford at Union Grove Lumber Studios. And this is the Shed Geek. We want to welcome you to today's episode. Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek podcast. And a little impromptu here this morning. Uh, and I'm, I'm jealous because what I do know about this guest today is that it's warm where he is. And it certainly is not <laughs> where I am today. Uh, a balmy... 20 degrees i think it is today feels like six chris if you can make any sense of that it's it feels like six but it's 20 i think that means it's six (laughs) degrees then like that's what it means to me but but um tell you what just take a little time if you will to introduce yourself to the audience uh your company a little bit about who you are and what you do it's great i appreciate that excited to be on the podcast and i look forward to this conversation so I'm Chris Long, the founder of Long Yard Storage and Long Box. So starting with Long Yards, I started my first business in Canada, discovered a shortage for contractors in the industrial space for small spaces. So I had an industrial piece of land that carved up in the compounds and I basically started renting them out. And as simple as it sounds, it is, you know, simple, but not easy <laughs> as we're expanding internationally. As a, I'm also a franchisor with Long Yards, so we have franchisees. So we're looking to have five new locations open by the end of this year, as of projected by the end of this month. So, so um, and the complimentary, which is why you know I'm excited to this podcast, is at the Long Yards locations in the compounds, we had tenants that were just buying containers and having offices. So we figured, let's find a product that we might as well bring in-house. So we ended up becoming, um, you know, a, a distributor of what we call Long Box. And these are containers, which... I'm actually in a long box right now and they fold and they unfold and they're very mobile, very versatile, they're steel, so they don't rot and rust and they're just, you can easily get it in a backyard, you know, right through a gate, super simple, just a very versatile product. So a little bit about me, who I am and and the long box products and excited to dive deeper and uh, keep going from there. Man, definitely very cool. Well spoken too. And what the audience should know is like, we, a lot of times I'll do like a uh, meet and greet or do like a, uh, a vetting process a little bit early on to at least kind of want to know more about the product to ask good, good uh, questions that me and you've just missed each other in communication back and forth the last few times. Actually, it's been on my part, not on yours. Uh, we've just been running, running. So I appreciate that you would uh, still bear with me and come on to do this. So, so I guess let's start maybe with long yards and let's talk about like, yeah. How- what what's an average because like you're not just putting you're not just putting um like sheds or like containers in there for people to come rent out this is space for like small businesses for a a small period of time or a long period of time and you like develop that space i'm guessing for them to come in and pull all their equipment in um how how does it sort of work and what's like the average space maybe of like one of these uh these compounds that's maybe that's the wrong word (laughs) yeah no it's a it's a you can call the compound i hear many different things mini lay down yards a lay down yard outside storage um contract storage yard storage yard we actually own all the domains (laughs) storage yard near me (laughs) we clean house so we're like we're taking this over um, but to answer your question, it's for those small growing businesses and homeowners that don't need a full, they don't need to lease a one or two acre place with an office. They don't need that five, three year office lease for, you know, three, five or eight grand a month on a triple net lease. You know, they don't know how their business is going to be in the next three, six, nine or 12 months. So we create a solution to that problem. It's fully fit up. It's ready to go. And it's month to month. So it's what your business needs when it needs it, right? Pretty simple. Uh, and, and so the average size compounds, just they're, they're, they're micro compounds in spaces that you can't get. And they vary from 2,000 square feet up to 20,000 square feet. And it really depends on the market and where we're targeting and what we feel like is the avatar in that area that we're going to build these yards to target them. But to give you an idea, it, it's, it's in that range. And I mean, we can't keep up with demand. That's awesome, man. Yeah, what a great idea. Um, was it um, Ray Kroc that said one time, he said, uh, you know, I'm not in the burger business. I'm actually in the real estate business, right? So it kind of sounds like, you know, you're taking some inspiration <laughs> there uh, and you're, you're, you know, you're taking a look at the value of property and like what that property value can do for a small amount of time. We have, 
we have like this, uh, 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 what they call an encampment every year at our, our local little town. And actually where our shed lot was at one point sits right across from the main uh, uh, entryway to this state park. And it gets so busy every year whenever they do the war and reactment and things like that, that we began to rent out the lot, the shed lot for space. It was very valuable space yeah. for, for one day a year. And then all of a sudden, no one would pay me anything to park there. Couldn't even get them to show up half the time. So um, where, do you, where does the idea from this come from? Where do you harvest an idea like this? Where's the thought generated? <laughs> well, uh, it, it's a funny story because I had I was a contractor myself. I'm a licensed carpenter. I've been in the construction industry for 15 years. Ran my construction company, Conrad Construction, named after my grandfather for 10 years. And I had a two-acre lot outside the city in Ottawa, Canada. I don't know if people sometimes like, they get my Canadian accent right away. But, um, and, you know, my wife would come home and she's like, Chris, like our, our driveway has trailers and equipment. I'm like, yeah, like I, I got no space for it. And, you know, I didn't need a full big spot. I just needed, I had a, a skid steer. I got a few dump trailers. And and the the, the solution came the problem came from a, a solution I needed, right? I had a commercial property eight minutes from my house and I was like, what do I do on this? My brother and I want to do self-storage. Self-storage is getting saturated in a lot of places. They're just popping up everywhere. And I, I still love storage because as a real estate guy, I was like, man, this is the space to be. But so I just put the two and two together. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to build a, a product for the problem I have. And I'm going to go all in. And I had to go all in because no one believed in me. And my investors are like, no, nah, you're crazy. That's not going to work. And I'm like, it's pretty simple minded. I'm like, no, if if it, if it if I need it, sure enough, someone else does. And sure enough, that's how it worked. So I started off with phase one, built it out. And it was it was a leap of faith. I, I couldn't even afford to put the, the gates on when I finished because it, it took every ounce of capital I had to get it going. But I pre-sold the first phases by the year, which allowed me to put the gates on and get it going. And then the rest is history. We leased up the other. Uh, we're, we're talking about sixty-seven yards on ten acres, and 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 now it's leased up. And that one property changed my life. It allowed me financial freedom. I literally moved my family and I to Florida from Canada. We're expanding internationally, and just from the real estate side. I mean, I bought it for four hundred seventy thousand, and now it's easily worth four point five million. Oh wow! And that one deal just yes. changed my life. So, and what we're doing now is we're finding franchisees to do the same thing. It's like, let's find you a piece of real estate together. Let's put the long yards model and let's do the same thing that I did. So that's, that's the long yard side of things. Man, I think it's a great idea. What, what year did you start this? I cut the ribbon October 1st, 2019. Man, good for you. And you, you look like a young guy. So it looks like you're uh, starting out pretty, pretty early. That's what's great. <laughs> I, you know. I appreciate it. I guess the business stress hasn't really beat me up too much. I am 35, so I guess I'm still looking pretty good for my age, but uh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, well, I, so I'm 43, so to me, everything that's younger than me is a young guy. But, I mean, you know, uh, 35 seemed out at the time, and now I, I'd imagine I'm, I'm starting to be like these 50-year-old guys that say, oh, you're just a, a young pup, right? But good for you, man. I think that's awesome. Have you ever had a customer ask you about how to supply power to their shed? Do you sell electrical kits as an upsell for your sheds currently? Do you want an easy, no-hassle option to offer for your customers when they want to add electric to their sheds? Check out Echo Ethics Solar. Echo Ethics Solar is looking for shed manufacturers and shed dealers who want to be able to provide a solar electric option to their line of sheds. With Echo Ethics Solar, you can purchase the SunSaver, a solar product specifically designed with the shed owner in mind. Want to offer a larger product that can operate a full tiny home? At Echo Ethics Solar, they have the necessary product, training, and capacity to meet your customers' needs. Installation for the Sun Saver is simple and takes just 45 minutes. You can even install it right there in your sales lot or at the manufacturing facility. Echo Ethics Solar even provides hands-on in-person training if necessary. Plus, they will provide you with video tutorials and handouts with specific installation instructions that keeps adding a solar-powered electrical system to your shed fast and simple. In many cases, the end user can even perform the installation once the shed is delivered to their home. If you are interested in purchasing a unit for display and then drop shipping your orders or even ordering multiple units to have available as you build, contact my friends at Echo Ethics Solar at 336-250-1284 or email sales at echoethicsolar.com. How many locations have you guys been able to manage? Is that something you share or is that on your website? So we are just, we're building out in Central Florida in Winter Haven right now. And we just secured another property in 
Texas, which until we go to the next phase of due diligence, we don't really disclose it. But it, we got one in Texas, North Carolina, and um, another one. We just it was last week. Uh, another one, North Carolina, actually. So same area. So we're, we're, we're and as a franchisor, we're, we're expanding that way. So, um, yeah, we're, we got them up and coming. So let's say somebody was a listener to the podcast and they were like, hey, we're in the storage space. And this sounds eerily similar, maybe not the same as what I yeah. do, but we've got some space, yeah. maybe even have some space in a really uh, high population area. I'm sure you do your d- due diligence on population density and things like that to kind of figure out what you're going to. See, but my thought is, what if somebody wanted to contact you and they just want to know more about that specific area of your business? And they were like, hey, we'd like to at least fill out a, uh, uh, you know, whatever your forms are to at least, uh, you know, you entertain the idea and let's have a conversation. How does that work? No, you can find me right on longyards.com. There's a, you just follow through the links and fill out some information. I'll get the link or I put my phone number right on podcast 941-278-1995 or my email clong at longyards.com so my information is out there i'm pretty easy to, to track down and you know happy to jump on a call it's just you know there's a lot of guys that have a lot of space they build a lot of sheds so you know for a lot of them they have a lot of unused space and it just seems like it could uh could, could be a good marriage if it were to work out so that would be that'd be just awesome i think it's a great idea what are you seeing most of most people like what are they using these four uh, storage wise? Well, it's funny. A lot of people will take my business model and assume boat and RV, but it's actually the farthest thing from boat and RV. It's a lot of these small businesses. It's the arborists, the landscapers, the general contractors, the property maintenance guys, it's car dealerships, sometimes tow truck drivers. It's, you just have such a large client base that need a mini yard, you know, and then it goes to homeowners and hobbyists. I got people that just you know, want to get away from the wife and they've got the little, little spot there and they got a little shed and they just do their thing, you know? So it, it really caters to so much. It's probably, I'd say 70% small business and 30% homeowners and the homeowners, you know, it's just like boats and RV. we do have the boats and RVs, it's not as common, but they got their ATVs their toys or just a yard for all their stuff. Yeah. As the city grows, you just have less space, right? Especially in places like Florida with HOAs and then everything else. So there's just such a need for it on so many different levels. And then the client base really varies. We, we do have a very good idea of who our avatar is, how to target them and the best places to focus. But uh, we're just always surprised by new clients coming in. Well, I just want you to know, Chris, I would absolutely never, ever, ever use this to get away from my wife because she edits these videos. And I just want her to know that I want <laughs> to be with her all the time. We would never, ever consider this ever as a (laughs) as a man cave or an escape route uh, to get away so um yeah i should have sorry had to do my due diligence there um yeah i think it's great what do you provide inside of these spaces is this you know blank slate or you're willing to you know provide some amenities uh is any of it climate controlled if that's necessary do they provide that for themselves What, what what's that sort of look like is it just the space it's just, it's a fenced in yard, 67 fenced in yard. So you got, you know, the fabric, the gate, you have a self storage gate. So immediately uh, people are not coming in and out. And then in, when you drive in, instead of self storage units, it's self storage yards, basically. Awesome. Um, and then we brought, we could provide power uh, to a capacity. We could provide a camera in your yard. And we have some people, tenants with cameras in their yards that are running, uh, you know, an excavation company and they have a, a bulldozer in the back that they, don't want anyone going near it. We can set up the camera in a way that if anyone goes near a certain part of the yard, they will get an emotional alert sound on their phone. So without even having to think about it or know, like just immediately, someone's near my stuff, I can look and I know who's there when. So that's really cool. So we're uh, we're big on the automations and the, the technology. Um, but And then also, as I'm sitting in one of my long boxes, uh, we provide those in the yard as well. So someone wants to rent a long box because they obviously have some inside stuff that you can keep out of the elements. We provide that. We also have what we call long offices. So there are offices that fold and unfold, fully insulated, European doors and windows, beautiful product. And and that's for if you need a little admin, you know, someone staffed, a little bit of bookkeeping or to keep an eye on stuff, inventory, and other, you know, a fencing company and you're displaying your products in the yard, whatever the case is, uh, we're, we're very adaptable. And that's our core model is, is adapt for, for multiple reasons. But, you know, yeah. So tell me a little bit more about these long boxes. Uh, who who builds or manufactures these? What sizes do these come in? 
Tell me a little bit about the backstory of that and how you kind of got, uh, you know, began to use that also in conjunction with the, the long yard. Well, so I was looking for a partner for these products for a little over two years. And it's actually hard to find, um, to become a distributor. And like we get wholesale pricing and it, we have the first for refusal for, you know, Canada and the States. So with these product lines and, uh, we had to search really deep to get him, and we're, you know they come from from Europe, and you know they're they're fabricated in Turkey, but they're really well built, twenty gauge steel. You get them in different sizes. Now we can do custom, but for scalability purposes, we are only sticking to a few sizes: seven by tens, seven by thirteens, seven by sixteens, and four colors. Uh, we're doing black, gray, light gray, and blue. And and I think that's one of the keys because we're importing them, and by the time they come over the water, there, there's timelines. And it just takes a little bit of time for us to, to get them. So, you know, we want to keep it simple and kind of like a cookie cut, cutter assembly line and just keep these rolling. Because we also sell them locally at our locations to the consumers. And another point I just want to mention is that we can wholesale these, which we've already wholesaled them uh, in Montreal and in Kentucky. And people buy them in bulk as well because they could sell them from their shed locations as well. So people love these products, which they could check us out at longboxstorage.com. They want to add them to their already existing inventory. Um, then we can do that as well. Oh, very cool idea. And I, we're just seeing more of that. Uh, the shed becomes sort of the, the ethos or the, the nucleus, if you will, sort of, uh, that brands a lot of different things together that, that, that brings them together, uh, whether it be, you know, play sets or greenhouses or chicken coops. I mean, there's just, there's now you're seeing metal, you know, steel tube, and some people are, are, you know, selling post frame and sheds. So then that starts to get complex in the software side of things. Um, yeah, with the steel buildings, so how do these compare to something like uh, what I would refer, refer to as like a steel container, a Connex box, something that you're, you're seeing come across seas and then and then just, you know, they, they sell those out or scrap them out or whatever they do when they get damaged? Great question. And that's a lot of people think. They're like, well, I can get a shipping container. It's just a different product, right? First of all, these are more contemporary. They're more clean. A shipping container is a tank. It's a, it's a great product, but it's more like an industrial setting. You can put that in the back of your commercial property, and, I mean, it'll last you a long time. It, it will rust. It's steel, but you're pretty confident that you could you could beat that thing up a little bit. It's heavier to move. It's just it's a bigger product. Where these, they can literally fold and unfold. You can easily get it in your backyard. You can go across a beautiful landscaped backyard on it from a deck and everything else and just have it set up. So it's very quick and easy and simple and it's very versatile. And it, it's just, they're two complete different products. And I really got to educate people a lot. It's like, because it, it kind of looks and feels like a shipping container, but it's a late last thing from it. And the outside, uh, it's just, it's just a beautiful product. It's very contemporary. You could definitely see some of those on the website. I'm kind of going through that and viewing it a little bit. You can see the windows and, and I know with like traditional steel containers, you can make all those alterations yourself, but to, to be honest with you, it's not as though they're so uh, cost effective that it offsets, say, like a traditional storage shed, like a like a uh, um, stick built shed, you know, and, and you, you get the aesthetics with that and you get the aesthetics yeah. kind of with what you're talking about. Um, how do you transport these things? I mean, we've got a big transportation, you, you know, de- department no. in the shed industry. So how do you do this? It's so easy. You need a flatbed trailer. And two guys can move these. You don't need specialized equipment. And they can stack on top of each other. So you could deliver five of these at one shot. Because they, they stack male and female. When they're folded, they're about 12 inches high. Wow. And that's it. And then they, they come like a sandwich. And then it's like an Ikea box almost that comes unpacked. So you could deliver them unassembled. And, uh, you know, you could easily have two guys take it apart and move it in the backyard. So that's the beauty of it. And then when you obviously sell your house or move, you can unfold it and take it with you to the next house. It's just a different product. But you don't need massive equipment. You're not hauling extremely heavy sheds. And you're not taking apart fence panels or just um, you don't need a, you know, like a dingo or, um, you know, you could just literally a pickup truck and a flatbed and you're good to go. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. I'm looking through the different pictures on the gallery to sort of see the stackability here that you're talking about. Introducing the Real Steel Portable Barn Door Press. You can use it to assemble your doors using truss connector plates to create strong, straight doors. 
The truss plates are kept in place by using our precision spring plate system, the same system as used on our truss press. Standard size truss plates are 2x4, other options are available. Air cylinders are used to push the door together before the hydraulic cylinders push the plates into the door. This makes it easy to place your pieces of wood into the machine and assure a nice square door. Two pins on either side of each of the vertical braces allow an easy and precise fit every time. There are two sets of three press stations on one rail. This allows for three stations to move in and out while remaining perfectly in line with each other. The stations also slide back and forth on each rail for different lengths of doors. You can make door widths ranging in size from 33 inches to 48 inches with a maximum length door of 76 inches. We can accommodate nearly all of your needs when it comes to different sizes. The hydraulic power unit has a 10 gallon steel hydraulic fluid tank with a 3000 PSI two-stage pump. The two-stage hydraulic pump makes for a four to five second cycle time. An in-tank filter and a return line filter helps keep your hydraulic fluid clean and long lasting. The electronic control panel allows you to operate all the air and hydraulic controls from a safe distance. A two-handed safety system is used to provide a safe, efficient operating method. The unit is powered by a three-phase 7.5 horsepower motor, complete with controls. A single-phase motor is optional as well. Contact us at realsteel.com or call Darren at 570-713-0665. Real Steel, production machines for the wood industries. Um, installation, you kind of said two guys can do this. How long does that take? Is that a pretty quick process? Do you need a fork truck? Or, you know, <laughs> how does it typically no. operate? Oh, we have on our, it's actually on a longyards.com. We have a quick uh, time-lapse video, but no, it's two guys and 45 minutes. The, the you put the floor down and then you put the side walls and then the roof last piece that goes on the top everything bolts together and it's it's actually very heavy duty as well you have these large bolts that literally connect the whole unit there's steel frames there's four heavy conducting steel frames that sandwich um from the top to the bottom so you can literally park a boat on top of this it'll heavy it'll withstand the heaviest snow loads so super easy to install too and and you know a husband and a wife can put it up on the weekend. It's uh, it's really easy. You don't need to be a super DIY handy. It's, it's almost like a fun DIY project. So let's say that they're uh, bringing these in to the long yard and they want, you know, the installation of some, the long boxes so that they can have office personnel there for a small amount of time. Maybe they're building a, a hotel in a particular area or something like that. And they just kind of need some, yeah. some, uh, administrative staff there to kind of handle different things. Uh, break rooms, whatever you, whatever you use them for. Um, what all can you, can you do with these AC heat? What, how does that usually work? Just you run something temporary. Right. So the long boxes are more like a simple DIY product. The long offices, they are a little bit more heavy duty. They're insulated panels. Now they, they do come in two by eight foot sections. So you can still, you know, manhandle them and move them around with two guys, but, but the roof is a little bit heavier. So you're going to want a forklift or something to assemble those. So for those products that are already, fully insulated, ready to go, foldable and unfold and unfoldable. Um, those you could, you can add like a, like a mini AC, AC unit, or we could fit them up with the electrical and then you could just transport them fully assembled as a fully, you know, traditional kind of, let's call it construction office. So, uh, yeah, those, those are more versatile for, cause they're insulated to handle the heat and, uh, the electrical. So how does this usually work? You just sort of provide the, the total space and the the unit for rent or do you do you rent these things out to different uh different job sites a great question so phase one of my business model is long yards we we expand with the long yards we secure a piece of territory in a good location high growth and then we we do the yards phase two is the sales so right now we're just selling them uh get into the marketplace phase three is we bring the yard to you um, and we bring you a fully enclosed yard with a container, with an office, with camera, with powers at your location. So that's the future growth of it. Right now, though, we're just simply selling them and we're basically getting into that logistics and operations side of things and making sure we have everything rolled out the way we want to. And then we're going to expand to phase three, which is the rentals on site. Uh, I think it's great. I think it'll go over really, really good. Uh, a solid plan and it looks like a solid product honestly from everything i can see on the website i would love on my travels to go out and like stop at one of your locations and just kind of check out some of the product and, and and things and see like that I, and, I, and i think a lot of the shed guys 
would definitely be interested in the product, especially enough to go to the website and maybe, uh, maybe start a conversation with you at some point. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I think it's cool. I, I, I think it matches, yeah, it matches what we do, right? It matches what we do. We're providing yeah, storage. Exactly. Storage has just turned into something different. It's turned into the, we, we've kind of went to the aesthetic side with the additions of quality and a real quality driven product with mm-hmm. all the bells and whistles and different things on there. Um, this is, everything's editable here, Chris. So uh, I'm going to ask you this question because I didn't ask you preemptively. And if you're good with it, we'll roll with it. If not, wait it out. What's the price point on yeah. these things? I mean, I, I don't know if you have them listed or. Oh yeah. You know, share. Oh, a seven by, uh, so this is a seven by 10 and it's 31 95. Wow. So it's, and this does not include assembly or delivery, which is a quote, you know, we got to get it out there, but, and the seven by 13s are 30, uh, somebody is thirty one ninety five. I believe they're thirty five ninety five, and then the sixteens are thirty seven ninety five. But we think it's affordable right now. And one of our strategies is to partner with shed companies in Florida and just say, "Hey, why don't we put one of these at your location?" Because some people they just can't get a shed in their backyard; it's too complicated. Or look for something a little different, and then we'll give them kickback. And it's very simple. We have our fulfillment. We're in we're located in Central Florida, so we could, and we're sitting on over a hundred of these units right now in in ottawa and in central florida so yeah we think the price is on point the product has a good utility and we're just looking for great partners to help roll this out man there's some really good guys down there in florida for sure i, I could only imagine would want to take you up on that conversation but really even you know we've we've been able to attain listeners in all 50 uh all 50 states and really even a, uh our our second largest um you know listener base is is in europe but and you guys are talking about doing this thing internationally because this is something that can be of value no matter where you are. Absolutely. So I, I could get a full container out to whichever location and there's, there's great margins. I mean, we're, we're open book with our wholesaling cost, And I mean, we have a good CRM to back it, but if you have your own sales process and you can even brand it, we can have them shown up with your brand, your colors right to your door. So it's, it's a beautiful product, or we could just partner with you, put our products at your location and we could take care of it. So now, now that's local to our brick and mortar because we have to do fulfillment. Right. But on a larger scale, someone wants to get a full container of these and we're happy to work with them. Yeah. What do you, what are you seeing as far as like, uh, trying to administer, um, a pathway forward for this product online e-commerce and, or just, just sort of. The way people are shopping a lot of times nowadays is definitely media, meeting us in the in the technology space. So we're having this success in both brick and mortar and online sales. What do you see there? Great question. That's why we're, we're, we're very strong in a hybrid model. So right now our website is e-commerce. You can go on the website, pick a product, pick, the, pick a color, see our inventory, and you could pay for it by credit card. And you could put your address, confirm do you want it delivered or installed, and we and we off, also offer financing. So you can literally get one of these per month, less cost than a storage unit, in most cases close to you. So we offer financing on both Canada and the US and we have the e-commerce website. However, a lot of people still want to open the doors. They want to feel it. So we do the, the social media and the e-commerce you know, funnels and, and, and digital marketing around where we're confident people can drive and actually open one of these products because it, I think it, it, you still need a hybrid of both of them to, to work. And, and that's one of the things that uh, we're focused on. But we've, we've spent a lot of time building up the e-commerce in the back end, especially on both sides of the border. So it, it hasn't been easy to get that going, but you know, we're there. Yeah, it's well, I feel like this is something that whenever people are are shopping around, they're going to start to come across this. And that kind of leads to segues into my next question, which is really, how do you think things like this will affect traditional storage? So there's like a lot of guys out here that maybe will be like, I think that's a really great idea. And then, of course, you got to prove the model, that kind of thing, which sounds like you're already doing. Um, And they just sort of believe in their product, a stick belt product and, and the processes are there in place. But a traditional shed hauler could use their trailer to move these. So it's not as though, you know what I mean? It's like you don't have to change the whole transportation side of the process. 
Uh, you don't have to bring anything totally different in. This is something that they can do. It takes about the same amount of time. Uh, so how will it, how will it, my question, I guess, is how, how do you think it'll affect traditional storage? How do you think it'll be received? And what's your, your message to those guys? Today, we have something truly groundbreaking to discuss. The Zula from Mobino Solar Solutions. This incredible shed ventilation system is set to redefine how we approach air circulation and energy efficiency. A shed ventilation marvel. With three robust fans generating 630 CFM, two fans usher in a breath of fresh air while one strategically expels staleness. What's groundbreaking? It's solar powered. Harnessing the sun's energy, the Zula is a sustainable dream eliminating electricity cost. Sleek, powerful, and eco-friendly, this system is a game changer for those seeking efficient air circulation without compromising on green values. Visit Mobino's site for more of this innovative solar shed ventilation solution and use the ShedGeek 10 for an extra 10% discount. Just visit www.mobinosolarsolutions.com. Well, I think this could be a problem to a a, solu- uh, a solution to a problem that they have. Like, and I think based on me talking to local shed sales comp- you know, companies in where I am in, in Tampa, a couple of the big problems is they don't want to build and sell small sheds that much because the economy is a scale. They'd rather they make more money building a bigger product. You know, it's so a lot of the smaller ones get taken up faster. So we actually cater to the small sheds with, you know, a versatile product. And then obviously Getting the shed using the same equipment is one thing, but sometimes getting in the backyard is another. Right? Like, what's the complexity? And certain HOAs and everything else. So we we just offer such a great solution because this can, like, full. you could use the same equipment. You can stack multiple. So instead of delivering one shed, you can have these set up for once a week and deliver six of them at once. Have your crew go out, install it immediately. Very clean. Like I said, you walk across a beautiful landscape backyard, beautiful deck, put in the corner, no headaches. So... I think because of that, this offers such a unique position in the marketplace, and uh, it's just complimenting. If you're already selling sheds, then we take our traffic, we bring our clients to you, and if they want, then they have more products to choose from. So it's just a win-win, and that's why we think it's great to partner with other sheds. And and I think as the like any business evolves, new products are going to evolve, and and systems, and and we just rather partner with people to to help help them with their sales and anything we can to to increase their their clientele. What's your, what's your customer experience been like customer testimonies for like these products? What do you feel like the, the common theme is so far from their feedback? It's, it's, it's a wow. <laughs> Cause it, by the time they place the order and they get it delivered and popped up, it's like, it was that easy. Yeah, it's that easy. So that, that's really cool. You know? So, and, and they like that it, there's not too many decisions to be involved. It's what size. And we have the doors that could be on the front or on the side. You want a seven by 10, seven by 13, seven by 16, what color, where do you want your doors? It's a simple process. It's quick. It's easy from, you know, picking the product to getting it delivered and installed. And the customer just loves that. And the, the one of the favorite things the customer loves is the fact that if they need to move it easier, or if they're not sure if they're going to sell their house in a year or two, they can easily take this, fold it and bring it with them to the next house. So it's just, it's so much value from the client perspective that uh, they're loving it. Uh, I think it's great. Do you, what do you think, man? Is this, is this just like the evolution of storage? Is this like, you know, like watching (laughs) things change? You know what I'm saying? Like we, we didn't, we didn't see it. Like, I don't know. I wasn't around, but I mean, I hear people talk about the trailblazers that allowed, you know, even this podcast to exist really because of the industry they built. And like in the seventies, it was really cool when we, when we started, it's been almost four years now, Gideon Zook's episode where he said, you know, it's the seventies or there's, there's three brothers and his dad says, you know, in Lancaster County, two of you boys are going to have to get out of this or you're going to flood the market only to see that like millions of (laughs) storage units have been sold since then. And everybody always says, where's the bubble. And then like, instead of seeing like a a decrease, we're just seeing sort of a changing of the guard in some way. And and I'm not saying, I'm not saying you're the, 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 Kobe Bryant to Michael Jordan or the LeBron James to, to, to Kobe Bryant. I'm saying, you know, there is an alternative there though, right? There's, and is this maybe just the evolution of what we're going to see in storage? 
Well, I think like any product in any business, it there's there's um, compet- there's competition, right? And the competition is to how do you do it faster and how do you do it easier? And as long as you're evolving to go in that direction, then you're going to have a competitive advantage. Um, but how do you evolve in that direction? How do you partner? How do you how do you complement your existing business to go in that direction? So, I mean, even with with my business model, it's just I found a solution to a problem and I built a business around it, just like with with the long box product. So, I mean, it's a great question. It's going to evolve, yes. And how do you how do you stay on that tide to to be involved with the growth of that evolution? And I think it's just partnering with those people. You know, why why try to reinvent the wheel and learn yourself? Just partner with someone that's up and coming and let them take care of all the headaches for you. There's a whole lot of talk, like we uh, key phrases, like words, things that just keep showing up, unique cliche sayings, and they're cliche for a reason. And uh, like one of them here lately, and I just addressed it this morning on the Shed Sales Professionals page that that I manage. Uh, it, it talks about um, you know competition happens at the bottom and collaboration happens at the top. And I guess it was about a year ago I saw Mr. Beast in the Forbes magazine uh, talk about his success as an influencer. And it's been because of collaborative efforts that like, as you start giving away value, you begin to see that like people let their guard down. Um, And we have, we have sort of some of that in the shed industry because we have like all these gentlemen's agreements and all these, whatever that's just existed over a time of a industry maturing. Uh, So, you know, there's, there's been all these experiences that people have had that they can talk about and share and they do. And, and, and I guess in my eyes, I'm just thinking, yeah, why not work with someone? You, you touched on something there and that's why I took this rabbit trail. You said, why, re- yeah. why reinvent the wheel? And, uh, you know, I believe in collaborative efforts. I, I believe competition makes us good too, but I read something this morning yep. that really, really, I think resonated and I put a little post out and it said, you know, operating in a collaborative effort is like running in a marathon you're running alongside several other people, but none of you are going to finish at the same time. You're theoretically competing, right? But, but your real competition is with yourself because if you cannot allow yourself to set your pace necessarily by, by their pace, you're limited then by their success. You set it by your own pace and then you allow that to become the standard. So you just keep trying to beat your time. You just happen to be right. competing and running along with other people. Some that you will look forward to encouragement and inspiration some that you will encourage and inspire on their on their way. And a lot of times you'll know this if you've ever been been beaten that it's some of the most humbling lessons you'll learn in earth, right? On earth whenever you start to collaborate with people cuz I've watched people that I've poured into go farther than me. And instead of saying, "Oh no, they went farther." I say, "Man, I got to be part of their success." So that's where the collaboration really makes sense and the competition makes sense in bettering ourselves. And I'm sorry I got on that rabbit trail. That's a long way from long box and long yard, but you touched on that with <laughs> your sense. Yeah. yeah. And just like I'm in masterminds, I'm always paying consultants and coaches and you just extract that knowledge and you learn and you level up faster and you move towards your goals faster. So, you know, I'm always, I'm always learning, but partnering and finding experts in their field just to help expedite that process. Is, it's a win-win. Well, and it sounds like you're really uh, hands-on with the the clientele because you talked a lot about about the sales process and wanting to help them in that process if that's what it needs. So it's not like, hey, here's here's the product, go figure it out. Like we're a sort of partnership driven, kind of relationship driven. Oh yeah, we're gonna well with the franchise system expanding. Like we're here for the long term. Our location in Canada has been there for a long time. Our franchisees signed up for for ten years. You know, we're at a brick and mortar location. We're not planning on going anywhere. And we we believe in products that stand for the same thing. So from right from the fulfillment to the partnerships to the client journey, we want to make sure that they know that this is a, a product that's going to be sticking around for a long time. And and as a CEO and the founder, I need to understand that whole product journey right from the client. That's why, you know, I'm I'm in one of these. I I literally I believe in the product so much. So it's important for me to understand the whole life cycle of the journey right from execution to fulfillment from a manufacturing perspective a lot of these guys build and sell their own products i know you said you get a lot of this uh these are built overseas what what options are there to go stateside with that at some point i understand labor cost can probably you know uh, be a big hiccup in that in that process i understand but i'm just curious your thoughts for 
uh, especially a more conservative audience that I have that would, would think about the idea of like being able to produce and sell uh, stateside. Just fair. Que- I think it's a fair question anyway. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, there's, there's, pro- there's the materials and there's the labor, right? So some the material sourcing, especially for the European offices, uh, the insulation, the doors and windows, it's a beautiful product, but it, it has brand and, and trademark and, and kind of like IP because of the, the product sourcing that comes from Europe. And then by being able to match it with the, the labor rates uh, at this point in time, we can't see, um, you know, to, to be a cost effective competitive advantage at this point in time to bring it to the Western you know shores. Now, maybe with a certain amount of volume that we could produce, it might make sense where, you know, we have a lot of numbers behind it. But for now, for the economic feasibility, you know, we have to, to stick to this. Um, but it's well built. I mean, those guys in Europe, they build a good product and they stand behind it. So, uh, well, I mean, there's so much ger- German engineering here that just listens to the show. When you start looking at the products that exist, even inside the shed industry that are specific to it or that just kind of could aid in the in the uh, building sales and, and delivery, especially process. Uh, and a lot, a lot of these guys have, you know, like that, that German background and like, I don't know, man, every time I get into a German car, every time I see like this German engineering, yep. I feel like these guys were like born and bred for the purpose <laughs> of designing things. They're just, they have a mind that is way beyond for whatever reason, they just pick it up really quick. Absolutely. You know, sometimes it's like you, you kind of make it, you think there's a solution, you go in one direction and then you step back and go, no, it was better keeping it the way it was. And, you know, we, there's, there's good systems and processes in place for a reason. They've got an assembly line. They've, they figured out all those kinks. I like to keep things simple. And like, we talked about collaborating and partners, like, you know, they've got it down pat. So, Why? Let's keep it going. So if somebody's wanting to know more about long box, long office, long yard, any of the above, uh, one more time, what's kind of the, the best way for them to connect with you? Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, the best way, honestly, is longyards.com. You can check us out. I actually display some of the long box products right there, and there's links to the website. And clong at longyards.com is my email, and my cell phone is 941-278-1995. So I'm going to get to a part of the episode uh, where we've been doing something a little unique lately. And I forgot this once with James and I'm James, I'm terribly sorry. I know you listen to every episode. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Didn't give you a chance to answer this question, but my, my podcast have been getting along. I'm long winded, Chris. My wife tells me that I tend to get long winded on some of these. She said, you got to shorten them up. We're getting to the point where we got to do two parters and all this. And I said, okay, okay. I'll be a little bit more mindful of that, but I want to take the time to turn the microphone around should you choose to use it i know we didn't plan for this i didn't even mention it ahead of time uh so that you can (laughs) ask any questions that you have to the shed geek i do i do a lot of travel so i see a lot of places and i do my best to answer uh responsibly with every question asked but whether it's podcast related personal ministry sheds i really don't care turn the microphone around for a minute and chris ask whatever questions you have and i'll do my best to respond what do you think, based on your experience with shed sales, is the number one product with a uh, problem with people trying to buy a shed? What do you hear time and time again? And the number one over you trying to overcome it? Wow, what a great question. What is the number one thing that people struggle with? Hi, I'm Dylan from the Shed Geek Marketing Team, and I want to address a common misconception about marketing. Often people approach us for just one service, like social media management, where we plan and schedule your monthly posts. While this is a valuable time saver, it's just one piece of your complete marketing strategy, much like a shed with its various components. Let's simplify it. Think of your social media channels and Google My Business as the foundation, similar to the runners of a shed. They support your digital storefront, your website, which is like the floor joists and band boards. To enhance your marketing, you'll need tools like Google Analytics, Facebook Pixel, and Google Tags, which are like the walls. These tools help track the success of your campaigns, measuring form submissions, 3D shed creations, and phone calls generated by our ads. Now, let's talk about the roof, meta and Google ad campaigns. These are the top layers that complete your marketing shed. While you may inquire about one specific service, remember, they all contribute to the overall structure of your marketing strategy. At ShedGeek Marketing, we're happy to work on one individual aspect. 
but our goal is to build a comprehensive marketing shed that will truly stand out in the digital landscape. If you're ready to talk about your marketing strategy that will take your shed business to the next level, just go to shedgeek.com and fill out a submission form or contact the Shed Geek for more information. Um, it's hard to answer in like a really simple answer also. Uh, I, I tend to think that, you know, simplicity, you used the word earlier. Simplicity is the, is the key to sales. They say sales is a transfer of enthusiasm, but you know, whenever you get someone to stop at your lot, that's kind of an impulsive purchase. So when you think about like customer acquisition time, like if you're, if you're building a house with them, you got to spend a lot of time with them. Right. And you've got to pull out, extract a lot of data from what they're wanting to get. But with a shed, especially if they're looking to buy an inventory piece, they're kind of there now in the moment. And they kind of want to make that happen now. So salespeople can oftentimes be a stumbling block. I know I can by overselling because a lot of times you have to, mm -hmm. uh, you have a little bit larger customer acquisition time. If it's say like a custom build and you really want to walk them through all the options because you've spent all this time learning all of this product knowledge and, and all of these sales processes, right? And you're trying to perfect your, I don't want to say pitch because it's not always a pitch, but you're trying to perfect just sort of like the right answer to help whenever you ask a question. And I think a lot of times we don't get out of our way and just stop and be quiet and just ask for the sale. Like they're ready. They want to move forward. They just say, Hey, let's just go ahead and, you know, let's, let's make this happen today. You want to go ahead and write a check. We'll, we'll get with my delivery driver and we'll figure out when we can get this to you. So I think that's probably the one thing that stops them, but not having proper processes and systems, I think is imperative. A lot of guys that get into sales, especially shed sales, we talked about it today. It, it's kind of like, you know, especially with consignment lots, it's like, Hey, let's throw 50 buildings out there and see how they do. And it's like, Oh no, that's kind of bad. You give them a book. And like, these guys are either just like really, really super entrepreneurs that figure it out. And next thing you know, they're selling like 3 million a year. And people are like, I had no idea they had that kind of potential. And then you have other guys that kind of struggle and they might not believe in the product because the sales might not come fast and furious early on in the first few months. And they just kind of treat it as a, a side job. You know, so I think it's a lot of it's got to do with you as a person, you know, continuing your education and continuing to perfect yourself in the process of, of sales. Uh, but yeah, in a short answer, I would say processes and ask for the sale. Just ask for it. People are there. They're ready yep. to buy. Let's get this done. It's a short ac yep. customer acquisition time. I love it. That's a great answer. And I, I think a simple product makes a simple sale too. Oh, uh, absolutely. Would you? <laughs> you know, instead of what color do you want the shed? Well, where do you want your door? Where do you want the window? It's more like, do you want the door here or there? What color? Okay. Seven by 10. Door it. So um, yeah, I think, I think it's a good blend, but I, I agree with you. I think sometimes the sales process could get complicated and some people just can't ask for that simple sale. And at the end of the day, that's the lifeblood of the business, right? So you got to move the product. Some guys just want a simple shed. They don't care about the colors, this, that, and all that. They want, they want the quickest answer. And they just want a solution to the problem right now. And then others, you know, like you talked about Florida and HOA, they want to come in and kind of talk more in depth and make sure to get a color matching this and a, this particular roof. And, you know, they need that. So I think it's just figuring that out as a salesperson, like the, the needs of the customer pretty, pretty early on. So yeah. Any, yeah. Anything else, anything come yeah. to mind? Uh, what do you think based on your marketing experience, what you learned through marketing, what's the number one channel? that you get your clients would you say it'd be facebook marketplace uh facebook or google instagram like what channel is the most effective for cost of acquisition and and for actually closing the sale from the time they become a lead to getting them closed so what do you think is most effective man what a great question i you know it's kind of funny because i never saw myself in the marketing space and as just as time developed you know you begin to learn more and 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 this is, this is probably others experience too, or it will be if it's not already. Um, you know, we build, we build a marketing platform the same way you would build a, uh, a long box or a long office or a shed, you know, there's a window there sitting there and it's, it's a perfectly good window and standalone product. It works perfect, but it works better when it has an ecosystem around it, like lumber, right? You know, so now all of a sudden you have, you know, you have Google, and yeah, you have meta ads, which is, you know, Facebook and, 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 uh, Instagram, 
And, and, and then you have Google over here on this side, which is really just this common search engine where they control the, the algorithm that says we have went out and measured, uh, you know, the, 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 the best place to go based off of these keywords. We have, we have determined this website's going to offer you the most value. So, you know, hey, we, we searched 300,000 or 3 million places and within 0.33, seconds, we found this to be number one and this to be number two and this to be number three. And, and, and I think that people have to kind of put the whole thing in perspective and say, okay, well, let's start with building a brand. Let's start with your branding guidelines and like get all your color palette, your logo, all that stuff. Now you have a, a base and then get a website. And then we got to learn about SEO and how to index. And, and then we got to figure out, is that going to happen through organic on-page, off-page SEO or PPC ads? You know, uh, like, what are we going to do? So you can, we have a lot of people that, that mistake maybe what a full marketing suite might be. I mean, we'll, we'll do animations, we'll do video, we'll do photography, we'll do uh, uh, brochures. I mean, there's a little bit of everything that you can make happen. But whenever they call you up and say, hey, I need marketing, it's kind of like, well, what piece of the building do you need? Do we just need to come in around what you've already done or do we need to do the whole thing? Or should we suggest what we think is going to make the most impact? And generally speaking, I would think that would be your, your question was kind of directed toward Google PPC or, or meta. Um, you know, meta is probably gonna, you know, if you, if you throw some dollars at it and you know where to spend it and build your radius, I think that's going to offer you probably the, the biggest bang for your buck quickly. If, if you understand what you're doing, but are you capturing that data and retargeting and, and different things? But I mean, Google's still very valuable. People go to the website to find places or they Google stuff, you know, and Dylan tells people this all the time. You're down in Florida. So you may understand this, but like, you know, kids in the Midwest don't necessarily use Instagram as a search engine, but like kids maybe in like California or New York, if they're looking for a pizza place, they might use Instagram or, or, or something like that to kind of find where they're going. So it's, it's sort of changing. You know, Google's not always the answer. If you're a more conservative person, you might know DuckDuckGo or something like that. So you're using DuckDuckGo as your search engine and you're, you're waiting for it to kind of, you know, become more valuable. So I think the short answer to your question is finding out what they need, asking them what they need, and then offering some solid advice, Google PPC and meta is going to be your short shotgun approach at trying to reach customers as opposed to a longer rifled approach with, you know, organic SEO and, and, uh, things like that. So building, I got you. Do you know anyone? Uh, sorry, with Facebook marketplace, do you think that's a good little hack too? Or what do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously they kind of discourage the idea of businesses staying on there and constantly promoting their products over and over and over, which has become a bit of a, a sore spot for us in the shed industry. Probably the car side too does that a lot. Uh, you know, it's the, the purpose of it was meant for, you know, just like with the local buy sell groups and things like that, you know, they, they, they kind of are encouraging like people within community to sell. I don't think the purpose of it was necessarily for businesses to run a, a full scale marketing plan on there, but it's free and free gains the path of least resistance. Right. So like, if you don't have to spend anything, what, what concerns me is like, you know, if you're, if you've got a million dollar a year in sales and you're re relying completely on that, if Facebook decides to change that up, they're already a little bit aggressive on kicking you out or you have competitors re reporting your post or whatever it is. So like, it seems like you need to define a, a, a more consistent way to reach your customers that's legal and encouraged. And, and yes, of course it costs money, but there's value to spending money as well too. It's an investment as opposed to a cost. <laughs> so For sure. Yeah. I sound like a sales yeah. guy. I sound I like a it. sales guy, don't I? <laughs> uh, like, I think, you know, when you're you're in the marketing, I think it goes product, marketing, and sales. And the better product you have, then the less marketing sales you have. And the better you are at marketing, then the less sales you have to do. And and the more you have to sell, typically it's because, you know, you you gotta push your product and your your marketing. So I believe it kind of goes into that that series. Um that's that's my belief. No, but, I love um, your thoughts. I, I, I love that. Yeah. Tip. So, I mean, Steve Jobs did a great job. You know, he believed so much in marketing that he was going to remove sales. And you can go to an Apple store, you're in a lineup and you're waiting. They don't do much selling. They just do such good marketing and because they have such a great product. 
you know, they don't have to sell, they have a lineup, you know, and that that's, yeah. You definitely have to build a brand. I've got a branding guy coming up pretty soon. Uh, that's speaking on the podcast. I think that if you can get your, your brand to be understood, you know, you you only have two forms of business. Typically, uh, you have a service based, you know, business, or you have a product based business. The interesting thing about selling a product is you still have to provide a service to your customer. So like with service, you just sell the service, whether it's SaaS or whether it's like, I don't know, um, whatever you're selling, but with a product, you got to educate the people on the product and then you need to serve them by getting to the level of the customer. Um, we struggle with that because with marketing, nothing's tangible. So like a lot of people, if they spend money, they want to walk away with something they can touch like a, like a long box or a long office. They know where it's at. They can knock on it, touch it, feel it, a shed yeah. it's right here. I spent my money. I feel good. I can have my neighbor come over. I can have my kids come over or my parents and be like, Hey, take a look at our new product or new car or new long box, whatever it is. But with marketing, it's like, check this out. I just invested in a bunch of SEO. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll never see uh, for six months. I'll wonder what's happening. You know what I mean? To try and like understand if it's going to show up. So it's, it, it can be very, yeah. it can be very, you, you have to like really dream with the customer to sort of get them to understand that they're buying digital assets now. That is, that is, yeah. you know, intellectual property versus hard property. <laughs> so you're creating a digital storefront instead of a brick and mortar storefront. You know, your, your SEO becomes your gravel pad and your, your, your Google ads become your product. And, and you know, like you got to dream with them. And, and I think we're just in a place where we're still figuring all of that stuff out. But I, I do think I it's, you. I do think it's going that direction more if, you, especially if you're service based, but uh, I don't know. That's why we have a podcast, right? I mean, that, that creates communication. That's, Part of why yep. it, it happened was because it was to create communication. Me and you could talk all day, dude. And, and, and I'm sorry, I took away, <laughs> yeah, I took away sure. too much of it here at the end. I wanted to have more of your thoughts there. Uh, sorry, but uh, you asked me good. You said, ask me anything. And I, I hope I came with some good questions. So it's, Absolutely. It's, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I love it. One more time. If and me and you'll need to connect, I'll keep you on here after, if you don't care for a minute after we quit recording, but just, one more time, I want to encourage people to go and look at your product on your website, connect with you uh, so that you become part of the the ecosystem that is the shed industry. Because I think what you've got here is a really cool product. And, and, and I believe that people will be interested in it. But one more time, if they want to know more about it. Yeah, so uh, you can go to see the products at longboxstorage.com. So that's where you get an idea of it. But my main communication, uh, but you can find me there with the emails and links, but I just put my cell phone right up here, 941-278-1995. My main email is clong at longyards.com. Very cool. I think it's an awesome product. And uh, we'll make sure, for those of you who do not get the newsletter, we'll be sure to throw a link in there to the website. uh, And uh, there'll be a bio there to find out more about Chris. And uh, I don't know, maybe long term, we can come up with some kind of digital print ad or something like that, Chris, where people can get you or we can get some kind of a lead form or something where people can reach out to you and uh, just find out more about you. But I think it's an awesome product. And I thank you for being on the show, my friend. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Good. Hey, this is Mo Lunsford in sunny Union Grove, North Carolina. And we want to say thank you to all the guests and listeners.